Hey folks, Brandon Villarola with The Register, and I'm here with Shazan Siddiqui, Senior Technology Analyst at ID Tech X, to talk about the burgeoning sodium ion battery market on which he just authored a report. Shazan, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Brandon. Yeah, so you know you're gonna have to catch me up here. I wrote about, uh, I've written a bit about sodium ion batteries uh, in the past. The last that I reported, I think it was about this time last year. Um, we were still in in the midst of trying to figure out how to address stability issues uh, and short lifespans in sodium ion batteries. I mean, your report suggests we might be looking at a boom in in this sort of you know the sodium ion industry here uh, this year. Have we gotten past these lifespan issues? Have we worked around that? So yeah, I mean, very well pointed out, Brandon. I mean. When first generation sodium ion cells were first uh, released um, and their specifications were announced to the public, yes, we did see mm -hmm. that most of them were suffering with uh, cycle life issues and such. Um, mm -hmm. What we're seeing now is, you know, move, move, movement towards uh, generation two of these cells where we have seen some sort of improvement in the cycle life. Um, and uh, more specifically, we're seeing um, the push towards higher energy densities as well. So, okay. yes, I'd say in terms of uh, performance metrics, um, as we're approaching 2025 um, next year, um, we are seeing uh, better cycle lives and better energy densities being reported by a lot of the players. However, this comes, the statement comes with a caveat, which is that, you know, these are still values that are reported at the lab stage. So whether right. these will be commercialized and whether they'll be scaled up um, to higher volumes is something that still remains to be seen. Right. I mean, there are there are there currently commercial sodium ion batteries. There are some, right? Is that absolutely? Yeah, there are yeah. Uh, players around the world who are currently supplying sodium ion batteries. Um, mm -hmm. We can um, we can talk about a few of them as well if you want to. Um, um, but uh, you know what we're not seeing right now is the use of sodium ion in large uh, volume markets. Um, right. So these are what we're currently seeing is the use of sodium ion in in pilot projects and and one off projects um, where really, you know, sodium ion will start making an impact in the energy storage industry is uh, is when it can be deployed on a larger scale. Right. And that's what I was going to ask you, actually. I mean, what kind of, uh, you know, if we're getting close to the point where we're looking at mass deployments, I mean, are you predicting that's coming soon? Are we looking at commercialization, you know, in the short term here? Yeah, I guess um, it's it's a it's a bit of a tricky question that one. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like I was saying, there are some deployments in 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 one off pilot projects. Uh, we recently had China announce its biggest sodium ion battery deployment, uh, which was around 100 megawatt hours. Um, mm -hmm. Again, use being used for stationary energy storage, um, and we are seeing some activity in Australia as well, where uh, Radeon's partnered um, um, with a company called. Uh, so, so I can't remember the name of the company, but they're basically supplying residential energy storage units. Um, okay. So we are seeing uh, some players supply and um, you know uh, commercial products being available. Um, another example would be Natron Energy supplying in the US as well in the telecom industry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know I personally work a lot in the automotive sector, so where really I would see uh, sodium ion and would like to see it shine and be useful is in the automotive segment. Again, here there's lots of challenges for the battery to overcome. Uh, right. but what we're seeing initially and where I think the, the market currently lies for sodium ion is being used as a being used in a hybrid battery pack. And we are seeing examples of that as well. Um, we have Plastic Omnium, uh, Omnium, who are a big French tier one supplier. Um, they're currently working on building a, a hybrid battery pack um, okay. for, for, for hybrid EVs. Okay, gotcha. So, because I know, I know one of the things you mentioned in that report of yours was that, uh, you know, this probably won't replace lithium ion batteries, like sodium ion batteries probably won't replace lithium ions in the, in the, in the near term. Um, but they could replace lead acid batteries. So I'm assuming, like you said, right, in hybrid, in hybrid vehicles, uh, you know, um, uh, Lead acid batteries are used a lot in stationary uses. They're also used in automotive just for starting vehicles, right? Um, what other kind of applications are we looking at? If these are looking at replacing more lead acid than, than, than you know, lithium ion, are we looking at more stationary applications and things like that as opposed to, you know, uh, currently, right, in the market? Like, you'd like to see them in EVs, but is that something that's still a ways down the road with other applications to come first? Absolutely, yeah. I think you've hit yeah. the nail on the head there. Um, what we are expecting and what we forecast as well in our latest report and our latest research is that sodium will not replace the top end of the lithium ion market. So that's reserved for your, uh, you know, your electric cars and, um, you know, your our residential energy storage units. Mm -hmm. What we are estimating is that they will take up some share of the, the stationary energy storage market and uh, your micro EV segments, so your low speed uh, micro cars, your two and three wheelers potentially. And uh, yeah, on that note of, uh, you know, it taking up and competing with lead yeah. acid again, 
Um, mm -hmm. Sodium ion offers some great advantages over lead acid. Um, currently, you know, lead acid is preferred because of it's where it lies purely on an industrialization basis. It's widely yeah. available, relatively cheap, um, and uh, it's been proven in industry. It's been proven in the field. Um, sodium ion OEMs are hesitant to, you know, commit to it purely because of, you know, supply chain constraints. And mm -hmm. uh, um, however, I do think that in the future, sodium ion can replace lead acid purely because of how much safer it is and how much lighter those batteries will be. And also, of course, the performance benefits that comes with it, which are, you know, faster charging and uh, uh, low temperature performance and such. Yeah, my gosh, anyone who's had to handle large volume lead, lead acid batteries will probably be thankful that uh, sodium ions are lighter. That's for sure. I yeah. Mean, large batteries, lead acid batteries can get very, very heavy. So um, turning, you know, turning to the sort of international level on this, right? Um, I'm kind of curious about where the China and U.S. situation falls here, right? Like your report mentions that there's a lot of Chinese companies that are pretty ready to commercialize this as soon as they're able to, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, w what's the status kind of in the United States, right? Is this another situation where China is going to kind of beat, uh, I mean, maybe not just the U.S., but the West to the punch on this new form of technology? Or do you think it's going to be more globally uh, available once it hits commercial levels? Um, I would have to be honest with you here and just, you know, the blunt statement and the blunt truth here, Brandon, is that China is lead leading the race to sodium ion commercialization as well. And really, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tale itself is really quite ironic if you think about it. So sodium ion, you know, it was it was initially conceptualized as a way to reduce geopolitical uh, uh, tensions and and a, and a way to almost reduce our over-reliance on China for the supply of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, battery-grade lithium and such. But really what we're seeing is that because of the industrial policies that the Chinese government has laid out, China is actually in the front runners in developing sodium ion batteries. So they have over 50 companies that are, you know, in the lab stage. And then there's probably about five to eight companies who are ready to commercialize and supply sodium ion cells very soon in the next few years. And we're just not seeing those sort of numbers in, in the Western world, um, whether that's mm -hmm. Europe or whether that's U.S., um, and that is, you know, the irony that I talk about in the tale, um, which is that uh, if you take the U.S. specifically, for example, they have large uh, sodium reserves, which they could tap into and uh, potentially use. Um, but we're just not seeing, uh, you know, that much interest in sodium mine purely because of its performance metrics. So the Western world mm -hmm. is very quick to dismiss the technology when they, you know, read the specification sheet of a, of, of a certain sodium cell. Um, whereas I think the way we have to start thinking about is that different applications will require different sort of batteries um, and we there right. isn't one battery to address all needs and once that can be realized i think uh, other companies and other countries will start uh, picking up on that um, and we are seeing some activity you know in the, the latest iteration of this report we did actually uh, manage to include more western players as well so we've gotten the likes of unigrid and peak energy in in the us um, we've had northvolt around huge partnerships with altris um, so there is some sort of uh, activity happening here as well um, but again, China has beaten us to the punch, and uh, they're much further ahead in terms of commercialization than uh, the Western counterparts. Now, now, just just uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on this. Were sodium ion batteries developed in in the West? Where were they? Where were they conceptualized originally? I think originally they were born in the West. Um, okay. But uh, it is China that sort of worked on newer chemistries and worked on commercializing it uh, beyond the lab stage. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, of last year. I believe it was last year that the whole vanadium flow redux battery affair happened, right? Where this tech that was developed in the U.S. basically ended up getting again commercialized in China, right? And yeah. and and it's like again, China's beating the world to the punch on these VFRBs, right? That the United States is kind of just like, well, wait, wait, what, what just happened, right? <laughs> this is our technology, and now it's 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 becoming a, a, a win for China and not the United States. So yeah, I mean, do you think do you think the West has has a chance to catch up, or are we? Are we're looking at probably another situation where China is probably going to dominate this space in the short term. Yeah, um, it's an interesting question because, you know, if you really just look at, uh, you know, manufacturing capacities and the sort of announcements that have been made in the industry, then it almost feels like, you know, other countries are years behind um, mm -hmm. purely because of the number of investments and uh, that have been announced. And not just that, if you look beyond that as well, the actual setup of facilities, you know, um, to, to to start manufacturing sodium ion batteries, we're only seeing activity in China, really. We're only seeing new plants being opened up and new manufacturing lines being put down in China. Um, other companies around the world are still in that sort of, you know, uh, they're stuck in that almost the rut, which you call, where you have a product that's been proven at the lab scale, but you don't actually, you've not put a spade in the ground yet, um, to, you know, start right. building up those manufacturing lines. Um, so I'd say that's where, uh, you know, the world currently is. Um, but I, I think, yeah, coming back to the point about um, the sodium reserves in the U.S., I think 
the, the United States in general is, is at a very good place to capitalize on the sodium mine market. Um, and that's why we're starting to pick up increasing activity in, in, in the U.S. for sodium mine as well. Well, let's hope that uh, you know the U.S. and Europe uh, alike can can actually uh, not not allow this technology to be completely disregarded, right? Going forward, like you said, we need lots of different forms of batteries, and there's still work to be done in this model. But it's promising technology that has has a future. So let's not let's not let it go to waste, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Let's stay positive. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shazan, Shazan, thanks to you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me, Brandon. Yeah. And uh, if you, as always, uh, want to learn more about uh, sodium ion batteries and the latest developments in that industry, you can find out more on the register.